It is the work of God, and it's in the last chapter of the book of the Bible. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Janice. And I'm Ryan. And this is Quick Study Weekend Edition. This is the, the last time we'll have a 2017 program. We're very, very excited about this day because this chapter is interesting. Ryan, what are you doing today? Well, today we're talking about dolphins and bats. Are these two species related? Evolutionists aren't quite sure anymore. All right, <laughs> yeah, very good, very interesting. Now, today is an interesting day. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Well, from Revelation chapter 22, we're gonna be talking about worshiping only God. All right, very good. This is a time when we see this stream in the chapter 22, coming from the throne of God, a pure crystal water in heaven. Now. This stream is interesting because on both sides of it, it has trees of life. And we'll talk about that and more. Stay there. The year AD 70 was a brutal and pivotal one. It would change the look of two major world religions and forever alter not only the history of the area, but also the history of the religious world. In AD 70, the first generation of Christians was still alive and well, but Jerusalem had become the center of a rebellion against Rome, and Rome was bent on reducing it to rubble. The year AD 70 was one that would change the course of history. The Roman Empire had a new emperor, their decorated general Vespasian, who had been declared leader while still fighting rebels in Jerusalem. The great Jewish revolt had begun in AD 66 and the land of Judea had been in turmoil ever since. Vespasian came on the scene to stamp out the Zealots' hope after a few decisive Jewish wins. And yet the Zealots were so internally divided that some of that stamping was done for him while he waited. With Vespasian was his son, Titus, who took over the operation when Vespasian headed back to Rome to secure his leadership. Titus succeeded. In AD 70, he took Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. He ordered his men to destroy the temple, kill the zealots, and burn the city. Both the writing of Jewish historian Josephus and the archaeology of the area give us windows into this massacre. The temple was torn apart. Giant stones used in its construction were pushed off the mount into the streets below. An arc stairway used to access the temple collapsed, its capstone crushing the pavement below. An excavated street running away from the temple seems to indicate that the soldiers smashed through it to access the drainage tunnels underneath, being used by zealots and citizens alike to escape the carnage. Back in Rome, orders were given to mint special coins in honor of the victory, showing a personified weeping Judea and the captive rebel leader. Extra salt in the wound, since the rebels had dared to mint their own currency while they controlled Jerusalem. Eleven years later, the Senate in Rome would build the famous Ark of Titus, commemorating the success. Its carvings show Titus being deified after his death and his great victory procession when he arrived back in Rome. Pictured in this procession are sacred articles from the Jerusalem temple, the menorah, showbread table, and silver trumpets, spoils of war that were displayed in Rome.
God's plans are for us. He has set in motion a sophisticated set of events that can only be understood if we know God, if we are born again. This is what the Bible says. If we paid attention to the Word of God, the Lord has begun His work in us. This last chapter of the Bible is the 1,189th chapter. We must understand that a great deal of effort was put into the Word of God. Several generations of men and women worked on it and gave their lives to communicate that when tablets and scrolls and books finally came into being. But distributing it was something else. Never have so many people, places, and things been involved in such a big thing. The Bible is translated, you see, into over 5,400 languages, and it's growing tremendously. The Word of God is the name given to Jesus Christ. Now, we must pay attention to it and read it again and again. Revelation 22, verses 1 through 11. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 11. It has been a wonderful year. It has been a great year. We have had a good time studying the wisdom of the Bible. And I think that uh, this is a time when we can take in what God has said and listen to it. Now, next year, on the next day, next year, which is tomorrow, <laughs> we are starting again going through the Bible. And hopefully you have your Bible guide. If you don't, you can write to us using the addresses at the bottom of the screen. And you can give a donation in any amount. That would help us tremendously. We really appreciate that. Or you can simply give online. It'll take you to the PDF files and also we'll send you a Bible guide. If you go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. www.biblediscoverytv.com. Very important. Click on donate, make a donation, and you can go straight to the PDF file. But if you want a Bible guide, and they're really good next year. If you want a Bible guide, all fresh, just put in, please send me a Bible guide and we'll do so. Very, very important. But you know, there's one chapter left. We're down to the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. And as we do this last works of faith, how does faith work in my life? We really need to understand that God, when we invited him into our life, is working on us. He truly is. 
And as God works on us, we need to understand that it is him doing the work and we are not. We just get permission. So in the work of faith, we have the work of God. That's our last works of faith, the work of God in your life. We read Revelation 22, one chapter, the last chapter. And we look at 22, verses 1 through 11. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would bless the people who have read through the Bible with us and help them to understand the power of your word. Now, with that in mind, Lord, help us to go again next year in Jesus' name as we discover the truth about what you're doing. But Father, today we have to hear what Revelation 22 says to us in Jesus' name, amen. The 1,189th chapter of the Bible. Here is what it says in verse one. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. And the middle, in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every single month. The leaves of the tree, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there was, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there, no night. And they need no lamp, no light, no sun. For the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. That's the word for eternity. It is great because the holy stream flows from the throne of God. We must seek God, the God of heaven and earth. Let me tell you something. When I uh, was praying one time back in the day, back when this ministry just started, we started this ministry in Canada uh, back in 1992. Man, that's a long time ago, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, actually we started in 91, but we got established and everything in 93. Anyway, we were in Canada in 1991, late 91. And we got into it and about 95, I prayed and I said, Lord, we, we have this new thing coming called the internet. Help us to understand how to do it. And God gave me a vision at that moment in time. And he told me, call it the stream. So we have that 24 seven video channel, which we started in 96 on the streamtv.com. The streamtv.com. It goes to Bible Discovery TV, but that's what it is. It's there and it's been broadcasting since 1996. Very interesting. The word of God. Let's go back to the scripture. Revelation 22, verse six says, then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. What does that mean? The end of time is coming shortly. God tells us so. We must trust God. We must be ready for the Lord is coming. This is what God said all through. Revelation, all through the prophecies, all through the prophets. I'm coming quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm coming quickly. And we don't need to put our time on it. We just need to understand that God told us that and we need to do it. We need to pray for those around us. Every person we see in the mall, every person we see on the street, we need to pray, Lord, help them to come. Help them to come. Bring them to you in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit. We need to do that, beloved. In Jesus' name, Revelation 22, verses 7 through 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down. Listen to this. I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Now, what did the angel do? Then he said to me, see that you do not do that. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God only, worship God only. 
And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. What does this mean? We must know and keep the prophecy of the Bible. If God wrote it down, should we not be interested to read it? Should we not? We must read it. This is the word of God. Words from heaven. Words that speak to us. The name of Jesus Christ. That's who this is. The personality of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I simply ask you today as, as one person coming to another person, I simply ask you, do you know Jesus? Because that's the most important question I could ever ask. If you know Jesus, great. But if you don't, come to him right now and say, Lord, be the Lord of my life. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Be my Lord. Next time on Quick Study Television, our assignment is Genesis 1 to 3, and it's fascinating because we begin by studying Genesis chapter 2. Even though Genesis 1 is the beginning and we'll read it, we begin to look at how did God do this with Genesis chapter 2. So it's going to be a good one. We're going to be here, you be there, and we'll see you then. Ryan? Well, in Science Rocks, we've been studying bats and their incredible ability to echolocate. But this ability isn't limited to just bats. Dolphins also have this, and this makes things incredibly confusing if you're an evolutionist. Let's study. Sonar, short for sound navigation and ranging, has been an incredibly useful technology. However, man developed this technology off of the much more sophisticated biological sonar found in both bats and dolphins. Actually, evolutionists were surprised that echolocation was found in both of these animals, since bats and dolphins are assigned to vastly divergent branches of the evolutionary tree. Indeed, and since evolutionists cannot attribute this common feature in bats and dolphins to a common ancestry, they are forced to conclude that these echolocation systems developed independently in both creatures. This is called convergence. Convergent evolution is the notion that when organisms whose ancestral paths have not recently crossed possess a similar feature, they evolve that feature independently to cope with similar challenges. The question is, however, how likely is convergence between these two species? As Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell explains, up until recently, evolutionists thought that bats and dolphins randomly evolved their facility for echolocation through different genetic processes since the random road of genetic evolution would not tend to travel the same way twice, particularly to produce complex traits in animals of different lineages. More likely, evolutionists have assumed evolution found its way through different genetic means to achieve the same ends. However, having compared their genomes with those of other mammals, researchers found that the genetic basis of echolocation in these very different mammals is quite similar. Indeed, recently a team of evolutionists, led by biologist Stephen Rossiter, compared the genomes of 22 mammals, including six species of bats, some that do and some that do not echolocate, as well as the dolphin, dog, horse, cow, mouse, and human. They were surprised to find that 200 genetic similarities 
correlated with the ability to echolocate. So based on this analysis, what are the chances of a convergence between these two species? Physical chemist Dr. Jonathan Sarfati says that the chances of this happening are practically zero. It is just not feasible, he says. However, evolutionists cannot bear the alternative explanation, that being that God created both the bat and dolphin according to their kind with fully functioning echolocation as per the biblical account. Indeed, lead author of this team, Joe Parker, concludes, these results give us an idea that in some circumstances, the solutions natural selection happens upon can be similar in unrelated animals right down to the molecular level. Molecular geneticist Dr. Georgia Perdome, in response to this dodge, says, as always, the evolutionists give credit to natural selection and mutations, which just happen to come up with the same solution in both organisms. This is completely ludicrous when you consider the sheer number of genes involved. Just as common designs are used in engines to power motorcycles, cars, and airplanes, God used a common design to allow bats and dolphins to echolocate. This conclusion, however, is simply unacceptable to the naturalist, no matter how much evidence there is for it. Actually, the problem for evolutionists is even worse because echolocating bats aren't a true group by themselves. While the mini bat group do echolocate, the other group, called the megabats, do have some that echolocate and also have some that do not. So what does this mean for evolutionists? It means that the echolocation didn't just have to evolve twice, but three times, once in dolphins and twice in bats. These stacked odds really demonstrate the sheer and absolute impossibility of evolution. You know, one of the interesting things, Ryan, about this is that if something has to evolve, several times, and, and bats and dolphins are very different creatures. They fly Absolutely. you know, in the air at night and they can't see, so they use uh, echolocation and all that. Dolphins swim in the water, mm -hmm. um, and you know, what in the world are we doing? And if you think it through, if you understand it, they have to evolve separately. But if it is creation, and if you believe in creation, which I do, then it's not a problem because God designs creation with people or with things mm -hmm. rather, and with people. God designs a creation in two of those species yeah. so that they understand where they're going and he's got it planned. Yeah, you're talking about common design. Exactly. Right? It's That's like, exactly well, right. And it's even with us, right? An inventor invents something or, or a piece of machinery that goes into something. He's not gonna reinvent that. I mean, we have the saying, you know, we're not gonna reinvent the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, we don't reinvent it. We use the same technology. And, you know, it's important to remember that because most people would say, well, I believe in what seems to be natural, but there's, there's, it's, it doesn't seem to be natural to believe that, that this evolved over here and then it evolved over there, and, mm -hmm. but then that evolved up there and that sort of evolved down there. But in creation, God designs it and he puts it in play like two eyes. Most things have two eyes. Most things have two nostrils, one mouth. What is that? I mean, yeah. how come there's not, you know, 50 eyes in, in everything? But it's important for us to recognize common creation mm -hmm. as the main feature that God, it shows us that somebody designed it. Yeah, Very absolutely. Very interesting. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Now you studied, what did you I do? I did. Well, today I thought I wanted to make an observation uh, and, and it's probably a very simple one that you've already thought of, but I want to bring it up again. We have John who is involved so deeply in Revelation here. And we read in Revelation chapter 18, verse 21, that a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. And later we find out that, that John falls prostrate to this angel to worship him. And later he says, don't, don't do that. Worship only God. And then we see later on, it seems that John makes this mistake again. And we're in um, Revelation chapter 22, verses eight and nine. And before that, we're told that one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to John to show him some things. So this is one of those angels now that's showing him. And then John says, now I, John saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Again, he's bowing down to worship another angel. And then the angel said to me, see that you do not do that. 
for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets and of those who keep the words of this book. And he says again, worship God, God. worship mm-hmm. God. And so I, I thought for our application for today, at this point, we, the readers were observing that John who was so dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ, And this was the man, this was the human being that God chose to reveal the revelation to, trusted him to to write this down. So this can be an easy mistake, even for those Christians, even for people who have followed Jesus for a long time. It's an easy mistake to make. This is something that John did twice. And I think it's it's a warning to us. Mm that we should not be deceived and that sometimes our emotions can take over and we can react without thinking. But these commandments, we we read about it in Exodus, worship only God. Those things need to be not just in our minds, but in our hearts so that in these moments and especially in these days, there's a lot of voices and a lot of stuff that's going on out there. And some of it can look pretty impressive and can sound pretty good but we can't really react quickly. We have to be sure that we have God's word hidden in our hearts and that relationship with God, that we know his voice so carefully that we don't fall prey to things that would, would grieve yeah. God. I think it's important to remember the scripture in Psalm 119, thy word have mm-hmm. I hid in my heart that I might not sin, sin. against thee. In yes. other words, that's the, the King James version of it. But essentially, it's saying, I put your word in my heart. Mm -hmm. And as I place your word in my heart, show me and teach me. Because God's word for us is in the Bible. Yep. The 66 books written by 40 authors over thousands of years, all with the same theme. That's God's word for us today. Mm -hmm. And we don't need, you know, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are great, but we don't need that. What we need is the word of God. They follow. Exactly. They follow. (laughs) those who believe in the word of God. So I would encourage you, and I would really, really challenge you, if you've never done it before, read the whole word of God. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. This is an amazing book with 1,800 and, uh, or 189 chapters. You need to read this book, and we're going to do it again next year. So make sure that you get ready, because, and, and if you haven't written for the Bible Guide, write for the Bible Guide, because it's all new material next year. 